the previous videos, we have discussed about the principles of pre-stressing. In order for us to determine the stress acting on a pre-stressing member, the principles of superposition is adopted. The total stress will be the summations of the axial compressions, bending stress and also eccentricity. Now let us look into the equations for us to determine the stress. The stress acting on a pre-stressed member due to the axial force can be calculated by the P per A which is the pre-stressing force divided by cross-sectional area of the section. As for the bending stress, it is determined by having the bending moment obtained from the bending moment diagram divided by the section modulus. And the effect of the eccentricity will be the multiplications of P and eccentricity divided by the modulus of elasticity. You will need to first to draw the stress diagram careful with the positive and negative value for you to determine the total stress acting on the member. To determine the total stress on top of the beam that will be P per A plus M per Z minus PE per Z. As for the total stress at the soffit of beam, it will be P per A minus M per Z plus PE per Z. The area and also the section modulus are obtained from the geometrical property calculations that we have discussed earlier on. The area will be the summations of all the area of the parts and the section modulus will be the I divided by Y. This set the basis for us to determine the stress obtained on the member. Taking consideration the effects of the positive and negative value, the final equations of the stress will look something like this. For the total stress on top of the beam, we are looking at the positive negative value on the higher part. As for the bottom of the beam, we are looking into the lower symbols for the plus and minus. What you see here, there are two factors here, alpha and gamma. The factor alpha here can also sometimes be beta. The factor alpha and beta are the factors that consider the effect of the long-term and short-term losses. Normally, we use alpha to represent the short-term loss and beta to represent the long-term loss. The factor here are normally smaller than 1.0 so as to reduce the effects of the pre-stressing force. You know that due to the losses, the final effective pre-stressing force will be lower than the actual force applied. Also, you know that the beta is normally smaller than alpha. It is due to the fact that the total long-term losses are normally greater than the short-term losses. Therefore, the long-term losses will cause more significant reduction in terms of the axial force acting on the member. And what you see here, the factor alpha here or beta is always associated with P. In the equation here, 
whenever they are pre-stressing force P, the alpha or beta always accompany. Same goes to the other factor gamma, which is the load factor for pre-stressing force. The gamma here can be in two form, gamma superior and gamma inferior. It is basically a factor that represents the effectiveness of the pre-stressing operations. The number here varies in accordance to the pre-tension and post-tension situations. For pre-tensions, gamma superior and gamma inferior are given here, and for post-tensions, gamma superior and gamma inferior are given here. Also, in the previous slide, we have mentioned the critical stages of the serviceability, which are at the transfer stage and also at the service stage. The transfer stage means that the stage where the pre-stressing force is being transferred to the concrete. As for the service stage, it means that when the pre-stressing members is put under full service load. This leads to a situation that if we are calculating the stress within the member at the transfer stage, we will use alpha and also gamma superior. And when we need to calculate the stress at the service state, the beta and gamma inferior will be used. The transfer stage related to the short-term losses as it is transferred before the mature strength of the concrete. And the service stage are considered after the consolidations of all the losses. Therefore, the beta is being used. Same concept apply to gamma superior and inferior. The efficiency is better at the transfer and degrade at the service. Next, we look at the moment here. The moment is basically obtained from the bending moment diagram acting on the member. For simply supported beam, the formulas for the moment will be WL square per 8. W will be the UDL and L will be the effective span of the beam. For the beam other than simply supported, such as continuous beam, you will need to do the moment distributions and work out the bending moment diagram. And then from the bending moment diagram, the value is substituted into the moment here. This table shows the factors being used at the transfer and at the service. At the transfer, we are looking at the alpha and gamma superior. Also, in terms of the moment, it will be moment minimum. You know that during the transfer stage, the full service load is yet to be applied. The member basically only need to withstand its own self-weight. Therefore, the moment minimum will be computed from its self-weight. As for the service load, the losses will be quantified by beta and the load factor will be gamma inferior and the moment will be due to the self-weight plus the service load which are the GK and QK. Bear in mind that the stage of quantifying the stress here, it is still within these regions, which is meant for the serviceability limit state. With that, the factor of safety for GK and QK will be 